Wow, okay, so Uncle Reg is back. Interesting, let's see. Well, that is surprising. He's 16 and eight months. I'm really surprised by that. I didn't know this. What he was doing, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna have to find that out. That's just set me off. <sighs> That's a bit confusing. Hey there, Steve here. Now let's get straight into the 1921 census to see what we can find. This is my first look at this record. I really got three key questions I want to know, specifically about my maternal grandfather's family. I want to know what my grandfather was doing for work, because I think he was about 18, 19. What his brother, my great uncle, was doing for work at this point. I think he was working in the railways, but I'm not sure. And also the railway company that their father was doing, because I'm starting to look into some railway research. Now I'm looking at Wales, UK, First thing to note about the 1921 census, and this is January 2022, it's currently only available exclusively on Find My Past. And even then, if you've got a full paid membership like I have, you still have to pay. So it's a little bit frustrating, but this I really just can't wait to see. Hopefully in the future, this will be more widely available, just like all other censuses. But for now, I'm just going to pay for this one and then I'm going to wait for the rest. But this one is really crucial, mainly because the employment information is specified on these censuses. I really want to know the company my great grandfather worked for, see if I can get some more employment records for him. So I've got my clear research questions. Let's jump in to find my past. I'll just Google, find my past, 1921 census, easy way to get there, and let's click. If you haven't got an account, obviously at this point it will ask you for more. You can use the link below if you'd like, but just follow me as we have a look and let's see. So I'm going to search for my grandfather because he's got a less common name than his brother and his father. He was born in 1904 and I could leave it empty at this point but I'm gonna go with Llandovery which is where he's from. One thing to note if you hover over you can see a general idea of who was in the household at that time so you can confirm who lived together but you can't confirm where and anything else without paying. I'm curious obviously he's left school at this point but what was he doing? Now, in terms of buying the census, you can look at the record transcript or the record image. Personally, from a mistake I made yesterday, I would strongly recommend just getting the image if you can read it clearly, because you can make your own transcript. And you also get that historical document that has your ancestors' handwriting. In this case, the head of the household would be my great-grandfather, Joseph Jenkins, or Joe Jenkins, as he was known. So if I press the image icon, I have to pay. Okay, so again, unavoidable at this point for the 1921 census. So just check that's all right. I've got my card details in. £3.15 is about four US dollars, maybe four fifty. Check out securely. Okay, the record is now ready to view. Let's go to that record. Now we're into the Find My Past census viewer. I'm trying to stay with it, not jump around, get excited. This is my great grandfather, Joseph Jenkins, head of household, who was 44. Lillian was his wife. Leslie is my grandfather, his son. Oh, he was 16 and eight months. So I was slightly wrong about that. And Reginald. Now that is very interesting. Reginald, first point that I'm learning, it says he was a visitor. Now that is his son. I'm not sure why he's got visitor. So maybe he had moved at this point. I know that Uncle Reg, as I knew him, moved down to Swansea. I don't know when. And from Slandovery to Swansea is about an hour. So in those days, it would have been a big move. I mean, it's an hour by car. But I know they're a railway family. And he, as his father before him, in the last census, he was working on the railways. Wow. Okay. So Uncle Reg is back. Interesting. And you can see now this is his writing. Slandovery. That's a double L, the Welsh. It looks like L-E, but it's definitely double L. And Llanidlois. That's all expected. Now if I zoom out a little, let's see. Well, that is surprising. Now, if you look here, if attending school or any educational institution, it says whole time or part time. He's 16 and eight months and it says he's attending school full time. I'm really surprised by that. I didn't know this and I have no idea he was in school at that time. What he was doing, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to have to find that out. That's just set me off now on another thing to look for. But hey, so he was full time in some kind of educational institution. Could be more vocational role, but that's that's really amazed me. I thought he was for sure going to be working at nearly 17 in the 1920s. Wow. So let's keep it going. Railway engine driver. 
the London and North Western Railway. Now that is the thing I wanted to come for. Brilliant. If I zoom in, this was not on previous UK censuses or England and Wales censuses. London and North Western Railway. So now in other videos I can cover this. I'm going to look for those record sets, that specific railway company. Because if you've got any ancestors who worked on the British Railways, you might not know the railway companies came and went. They amalgamated. They popped up. It was a complete Wild West scenario. And the companies were just changing all the time. So to have that bit of information is really interesting. Doesn't mean he worked for them all the time because I know this particular station in Llandovery was run by different companies. But even so, London and North Western Railway, brilliant. <sighs> That's a bit confusing. The address of each person's place of work, at home, at home. I would have to assume that that means in the village. I'll come back down to Uncle Reg at the bottom. Well, I never. Uncle Reg is a what? Letters apprentice? Tether's apprentice? I might need to get the transcript here to figure this one out. But very interestingly, and I thought this might have been the case because I knew Uncle Reg on the bottom row here is working for the railways on the 1939 register, London and North Western Railway. No real surprises. So as you can see again, if I come back up, employment. And he was already working in Swansea at this point. And this laid the foundation for my grandfather, who's the row above, to come and work with him because in 1939 they were living together in Swansea. And that is how I now live in Swansea. So that's amazing to see. Uncle Reg got his apprenticeship down in Swansea and he made the move and he lived there all his life as did my grandfather thereafter. So wow, amazing bit of social history from this document. If you've got Welsh ancestors, you'll see this language spoken column and you can say my great grandfather, Joe Jenkins, spoke English and Welsh. His wife, only English and she had an English surname. I know they were in Wales for centuries, but they didn't speak Welsh. Both my grandfather and his brother spoke English and Welsh. So that's pretty cool. You can tell if your ancestors were bilingual. Okay, so wow, getting a lot from this document. Now, just to note with Find My Past, if you're struggling to read it, try the contrast controls down here. So you can increase the contrast or decrease. You can also then change the brightness. In this case, I might want to go even slightly darker. And let's see if I cross that. I'm not sure if that is any clearer. Fetters, apprentice, feathers, apprentice, letters. I'm not really sure. Okay. I may yet buy the transcript to find that one out. No problem. If I just set those back to about where they were. And then, don't miss this. Down in the bottom left, you will see this. Three males, one female, four persons, six rooms. So their house had six rooms. I know what address it was, or at least I think I do. And we'll see that next. Also, you've got the signature. So I've got my ancestor's signature, which is pretty cool. I must say, I love that. I can see their writing and their signature. Now if I zoom back out, this is the key thing with Find My Past at the moment. If you click here, it will take you on to the next page, which is like the cover sheet. I missed this previously and I thought I had to buy this, but this is where you get their address. Okay, so you've got Llandovery, Llandinga, Llandinga within. Now, interestingly on this one, I haven't got a house number, but fortunately I know what number the house is, and that is Lower Street, Llandovery, which later then became Broad Street. And that's fine, that's nothing new to me, and that's exactly as I expected. But just so you're aware, and otherwise this is all the contextual information your ancestors had. Now, if I go across, you'll notice then it's going on to the next image and they'll try to charge me for that. So just be careful not to buy ones you don't intend to with Find My Past. Now, next step, let's make sure we download this before we forget. Download it to your computer. Okay, so I've got my file. Brilliant. I'll share that with family shortly. And then next one is add it to your tree. Now, if you're not sure how to use Find My Past, I'm going to do more videos on it. And also check out my review if you want to know more. I'll link that below. Let's put in... Just type in their names, all the people to update. Just press comma to separate, then attach and review. And that will add this information to their record on your family tree. If you're an Ancestry user, the value of this then is you can actually come out of here, close this, and don't worry, you still have this. Come back to your family tree and you can then download it and export it and put it into Ancestry. So if you want that information just automatically, you can do that, but you can also do it manually as well. 
Now I've got those key answers to the research questions that I want to know, I'm going to go off and do more about railways and also try and find my great uncle in Swansea in the 1920s in any other records I can. Unfortunately, the 1931 census was destroyed in a fire, so there is no record of it. 1941 didn't happen, so there's only the 39 register which came before it because of the coming world war so they did a quick and hasty kind of census that's already available and the next census isn't until 2052 when the 1951 census reaches that 100 year data protection mark so there's going to be a long wait between these now next thing for you check out my review of find my past thanks for watching see you